Hello traders at CMC Markets. Welcome to a new update by RRG Research for Monday the 11th of September. My name is Julius de Campenaar and I am presenting to you from Amsterdam in the Netherlands and recording this video uh, on Friday morning. So let's start with a look at the rotations of various world market indices. I have the weekly RRG on the left hand side and the daily RRG on the right hand side and what I used to do or what I try to do is to see if I can find tails that are confirming each other because they usually give a little bit more confirmation uh, a little bit more trust in a potential trade so when we look at these RRGs here, so this is the weekly, then the ones that catch my eye, for example, are the Hang Seng and the FTSE, uh, to a lesser degree, the uh, Stocks Index. These, these are all rotating upward. And if you look on the uh, right-hand side of the graph, then you can see how Nifty, S&P, NASDAQ, Nikkei, New York, FANG are all losing relative momentum. So it looks as if there is a uh, at least a momentum move going on on the weekly time frame. Uh, they're not moving much on the RS ratio scale. If we move over to the daily RRG, then we can find a little bit more detail for those moves. And two that really stand out are the Hang Seng, HSI, and the FTSE. And they are confirming what's going on here on that weekly RRG. So I'm interested in uh, looking at those charts. On the right hand side of the daily RRG, I see the Nikkei moving into the leading quadrant after a rotation through weakening. And it looks as if the Nifty 50 in India is just turning back up before hitting lagging. And when you see where those tails are on the weekly, then you can see the Nifty is inside the leading quadrant, but losing momentum you can see that right here and the Nikkei index is going through a weaker rotation a weakening rotation but you can see how the last week that seems to be leveling off and there is a bit of room for the Nikkei to actually turn back up which would definitely be possible with the daily tail pushing really hard into the leading quadrant so the Nikkei and the Nifty I'd like to uh, look at as well. Let's bring those rotations to their individual price charts. Let's start with the Hang Seng Index. If you look here, you can see how the Hang Seng, and that you can see that by the uh, RS ratio line being long term below 100, like, like in a real relative downtrend. Had a little bit of hiccup, then went down, but you can now see how the green RS momentum line is moving back up above 100, and that is getting in line with that rotation. So it looks as if there is a longer term rotation going on in favor of the Hang Seng Index. And we're comparing this to the MSCI world, by the way. From a price perspective, there is support around 17,500. I think there's resistance at the level of that last high, which is in the gap area, which is between 18,800 and 19,000. 19, from a relative perspective, this, this index this market seems to be picking up if you look at the FTSE index in the UK you can see a bit of similar pattern longer term relative downtrend on a performance a little hiccup going down again but you can see how the price uh, stayed above that horizontal support area around 72.50 there are still lower highs coming in that's a bit of a um, caveat I would say but if we manage to take out 7,500 to the upside in combination with the continuing improvement of relative strength, and then the Nikkei index better because it is already on the right-hand side of the RRG and it went through a weakening rotation and is now starting to pick up. And you can see that here. You can see a clear difference between the charts of the HSI and the FTSE that we just looked at. Here you can see how the red RS ratio line is already above 100, that positions that tail on the right hand side of the graph. And you can see how uh, a little dip in momentum occurred, slightly below 100, that's the rotation through the weakening quadrant. And it's now 
uh, going back up again, pushing both ROG lines above 100 further into the leading quadrant. And if we look at the price chart, you can see how uh, this is actually a pretty strong move off of that support area. And if we can take out the first level is probably 33,500. And then here is, let's say, 33,750. That would definitely open up the way for more, ups, more upside in the Japanese stock market. And then finally, for the world indexes, the Nifty 50, probably the, I, I'd argue the best of those four. If you look at the relative strength line, you can see how this is still moving slightly lower. The RS ratio line is moving slightly lower, but the RS momentum has already put in a little low, a little bottom and starting to push up. And that's causing that tail to sort of shave against that 100 level here in the RS ratio level on the right hand side of the graph inside the weakening quadrant. But when I combine that with the price chart, which is completing a small bottom formation after a nice run up, correction, bottom formation, and we're breaking out out of that bottom formation, that makes, that opens up the way for at least a further move towards the uh, recent high, that's the all time high, uh, around 20,000. But it also suggests that there is more underway, there's more upside underway for the Indian stock market, at least for the Nifty 50 in this case. Let's take a look at the New York FANG stocks. The weekly RG on the left, daily on the right, and the one tail that immediately stands out, at least for me, is Google. Uh, on the weekly, it's moving strongly into the improving quadrant, strong heading, and almost crossing over into the leading quadrant. And if you look at the tail on the daily RG, you can see that it is inside weakening and starting to curl back up. And we know that that is usually a pretty good sign. So that's a stock that I would like to keep an eye on. And there's a few others that are worth looking at. If you look at Nvidia, that's inside weakening on the, on the weekly tail and it's rotating out of leading, almost rotating out of leading in, uh, on the daily RRG. So that suggests that there is a bit more weakness to come in NVIDIA. Kind of the same story goes for Tesla with a long weekly tail moving down, just crossing over into the weakening quadrant. And on the daily, it's inside leading, but it's, it's already starting to roll over. That's not very uh, supportive. Obviously, we do need to, look, to watch Apple because here you can see, and let me blow that up, how a big hit in Apple actually caused that rapid reverse uh, even on the weekly tail. So when it happens on the weekly tail, you can, you can be sure that it was a uh, significant move. And you can see how that happened on the daily over the last few uh, days, right here when that tail started to curl over and rotate down and pointing down again. So we need to look at Apple as well. And then there's two stocks that, I mean, Snowflake, is inside the lagging quadrant, but look at the tail, look at how that, kind of the reverse of what Apple did. Snowflake rotated right back up. And if I look at the daily tail for Snowflake, it's actually gradually moving nicely towards the leading quadrant. So that suggests pretty good performance uh, for Snowflake going forward, while the, the daily and the weekly tails are actually lining up. And then there's one stock uh, which looks really nice on the daily. That's Netflix moving straight into the leading quadrant. If you look at the weekly, it's not all that good, but I'm going to look at the chart anyway, because I think it's an, uh, it's, it's an interesting chart with possibilities. So let's have a look at those individual charts. If we start with Google, then you can see how the daily is rolling over and you can see how that, this is the improvement that we're seeing on that RRG that's magnifying such a move. And with the RRG well above the uh, 100 level, it is very likely that we can get a, a low in here and get a rotation leading, weakening back to leading. And especially when you bring in the price chart where you can see that Google actually, or Alphabet, took out the previous high made a new high and is now testing that previous high as support. So that is suggesting that uh, a new rally off of that support level is now underway. 
we look at Netflix, then the one that's intriguing me is this gradual improvement in terms of relative strength. That's a good thing. And especially when you combine that with the price pushing against overhead resistance, I'm going to use like, say, 450 as a trigger to re-enter into Netflix because that is where a lot of overhead resistance is. It's in the gap area that we saw back in uh, January 2022. So there's definitely a lot of supply in this area where we can take that out uh, starting with, well, what would that be? 450. That'd be a good first sign for further improvement in Netflix. This is a little bit more shorter term because the weekly tail is, is rolling over. But in the near term, uh, especially when 450 can be taken out, that would be supportive for a further rise in Netflix. And then Snowflake is the other one, which um, is a stock that has been in a relative downtrend for a long time. We had a few rotations lagging, improving back to lagging. That's what's happening here when that RS ratio line remains below 100. And then the uh, RS momentum line oscillates around it. But right now you saw the confirmation of both tails on the daily and the weekly RRGs. And when I combine that with what I see on the price chart is where I see higher lows coming in, a serious overhead resistance level around 160 and a really strong day yesterday. So if we can take out, let's say 160, or if you wanna go for the extreme, that's one, let's say 162, combined with that strong relative strength, it probably opens up the way for a move to the 190 area. That's a nice, uh, that's a nice gain, and it could be the start of something bigger. We don't know that yet. You never know, but you got to start somewhere. And the near term suggests that Snowflake is ready to take out 160 to the upside, put in a new rally, confirmed by relative strength over the New York Fang Index itself. And then on the more negative side of things, we have NVIDIA, obviously a stellar performer. Uh, well, since when? Since uh, October 2022. Look at that move. And here is that. This is the area of the all-time high with that big gap that we saw. And we're now, we're slowing down. There's no doubt about it. This uh, NVIDIA is slowing down. We tried to break out to another new all-time high. We managed that, but then we come, we're coming back below that breakout level, usually not the best thing. And we're now resting uh, at support around 450. Not very strong, just a few bars here, but I'm gonna use that as a trigger, especially when 450 can be taken out on the downside. I think that opens up the way for a further decline towards 404, 400, let's say 400, 405 maybe. Uh, and especially the rollover of relative strength is suggesting that NVIDIA has now trouble keeping up with the New York FANG index, with the other stocks in the New York FANG index. So the combination of RRG lines rolling over, pushing NVIDIA into the weakening quadrant with a break below 450 uh, is likely going to trigger a little bit more downside and weakness inside NVIDIA versus the New York FANG index. And then finally, Apple, big name, of course, a lot of news, big, big down day. And what you see here that there is actually quite a bit of damage done to this chart. We already saw the break out of this channel with a big gap. We ended at support, that was nice. Uh, and we rallied off of that support. But then the recent high here around 190 was smack in the middle of that gap, at the top of that gap area, which is now resistance. We put in a lower high and then we had that big move lower and we're, we're kind of holding up above 170. But look at the relative strength. The relative strength has been damaged. The chart has been damaged. So the near term outlook for Apple, as far as I'm concerned, is not very strong. We could get a rally back up to 180, which is the top of the gap area that you see right here. But please watch out when Apple drops below... 170, 150, 170 for sure, because that opens up a lot of downside uh, potential for Apple. And that would be in line with the weakness that we're currently seeing in the RRG lines and in the relative strength of Apple versus the New York Fang Index. And I'm going to leave it at this for this week. Thank you for watching this update by RRG Research. And I'm looking forward to seeing you again next week, same time, same place.